This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses.
since uh, it's the nearly like, well, it's over a year that I got to try this thing for the first time. This is the only Murphy Lab, pretty sure, that I've ever played. And I think a very good one. Um, I did initially do a video kind of on it about a year ago, kind of asking, you know, is the Murphy Lab stuff worth it? So I guess the context for that is really that this type of guitar, around about the seven grand mark now, this is a Murphy Lab Light Age 1958 Les Paul, um, but with a hand-picked top, which is why it'd be, you know, more expensive than a normal 1958. Uh, with the 1958, you get a nice chunky neck, a really comfortable, for me, neck, uh, but very kind of full uh, feeling neck, for sure. Not um, anywhere near the slim stuff. I think even a bit bigger than the 50s neck of my 2002 Les Paul Standard. How are they actually different? And I think I'm going to save a bunch of the talking for this because actually I think there's a bunch of this which is probably best shown with the audio. So I've got like the camera audio of just playing the guitar unplugged and then also DI audio of the two bridge pickups because I thought it was actually pretty revealing. Um, but anyway, in the hands, what do they feel like? So the most obvious thing that you're going to feel is that this does feel mostly like an old guitar. The only place that it doesn't is that the fretboard doesn't have any wear on it. The, the fretboard is kind of pristine, which on a, an actual guitar that was old, um, you'd have you know, some aging on the fretboard, really. Um, so that's the one area where it's kind of like, yeah, that's still pretty pristine. The custom shop stuff and the true historic stuff actually has way smaller frets in general. Um, and so that's, again, part of that feel of like the older guitar, um, where I think at this time when Gibson were making these, they were not really using the, the bigger frets that they've kind of migrated to these days. The overwhelming feel with this as well is that it doesn't feel plasticky uh, and that's probably the best way that I could describe the difference between this and here. You can see like obviously there's quite a lot of shine to the standard even though this is now a 22 year old guitar um, it's still very shiny it has got a bit of checking on it but the checking is nowhere near as pronounced as on the Murphy Lab. I think Murphy Lab use freezers essentially to do this. But the other thing that is the key difference with the Murphy Lab stuff is that this Nitro is a slightly different formulation, I believe, even to what they use in the custom shop. That is kind of what differentiates the Murphy Lab in a way is that they've used this lacquer, which they say is closer to what they used back in the day, um, which as a paint is probably kind of inferior because it is pretty delicate but what you're getting with a murphy lab is a guitar that is going to look old pretty much straight away and it's going to age quickly uh you do see some people that have bought murphy labs especially the earlier runs that the finish is kind of flaking off and stuff and to me it seems a bit like why are you buying a relic guitar if you're worried about that sort of thing i know it's like you don't expect the finish to f fall off a guitar literally, but you are, I think, expecting it's even the those original bursts. I think the finishes were notoriously not great, right? Anyway, so yeah, lightweight as well. So it seems like they've used some decent wood in it, um, which is often not the case. This standard in this era would have had some weight relief in it. I think it would have some other yeah, weight relief stuff. Whereas the Gibson Murphy Lab doesn't, and it's one piece mahogany, um, as you'll see. And color wise, you get more of this red, is it aniline dye, um, which kind of bleeds into the binding in some places as well. But hide glue as well is one of the things they talk about using on these, and Alnico 3 custom bucket pickups. In general, it's a really, really nice guitar. I think what's easiest to, to do is show you like the audio difference but I would say that playing this unplugged because I don't know of the quality of the woods or something about it means that it actually does kind of sing quite a lot unplugged and to me is somewhat reminiscent of an ES-335 such is the resonance and I think you'll be able to hear that back to back with the Les Paul standard so if I put them side by side 
I'm careful. The standard, I think you'll probably notice, is somewhat more plasticky looking. And the binding is quite a lot thicker. And the dots on the side of the fretboard are black, whereas those are actually, you know, like an acrylic or like dark red on the Murphy Lab. And yeah, the frets much bigger. And those are like the extent of some of the differences and what it feels like to play. This one is actually pretty slinky. I, I do actually really like the playability of this. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's not there's not a huge difference playability wise, except that they do feel like quite different guitars. If that makes sense, that I can play them both um, and not finding there's like loads of fight in the instrument. But this with the smaller frets does have a bit more of a old timey feel to it, I guess. Hello, right, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now here's some camera audio only of like what the guitars sound like, and then DI of them. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, Obviously, this is a 2002 Les Paul standard. I don't know what they're actually like, the modern ones. So you can let folks know in the comments if you think actually the, the recent Les Paul standards are, are good or not. The 2002 is an era where they're apparently fairly decent. Um, not one of the worst eras. I think 2005 up until fairly recently is kind of regarded as one of those uh, bleak eras for Gibson. But the Murphy Lab stuff... I don't know. To me, the lightly aged stuff is the, the stuff that I might consider, but even for me, it's a bit like that's a lot of money to spend on a guitar, as lovely as they are. Um, and this one, I think, is a particularly good one. But, yeah, I don't know. Cheers, Jake, for letting me borrow it.